Hello, this video is showing the steps I use in Inkscape to create nested shapes using Interpolate. I have made this video previously, but that was version 0.46, and it is slightly different. So I'm just going to quickly go through the steps again in version 0.47. Here's an example of a nested set created from one flower type shape. And that's the design I'm going to use for this video. So I'll just clear the screen and I'll get started. To create my flower type shape, I'm just going to draw a star. I've got an eight point star. So what I'm going to do is go path, dynamic offset. I'll get a little node at the top. I'm just going to lift it up until I get a flowery type shape. That's the look I was aiming for, so I'll go path, object to path. I'll just mention now, if you use another shape, always make sure it's an object. So if you're drawing a circle, draw your circle, go path, object to path. Then you'll continue all the steps that I'm going to do the same. Right, so I'm going to size the object. I might make this 80 millimeters wide. Now I need the smaller one, so I'm just going to duplicate it, and I might make it 40. And change the color. Now I'm actually going to use alignment, so the central to each other. But as these are actually cut out separately, it's not essential that you do align them, but I just happen to like them visually on the screen, perfectly centered. So this little step is actually optional. While they're both still selected, I'll go Extensions, Generate from Path, Interpolate. And now I have some more options. Exponent, you will leave at zero. Steps, that's the amount of steps I'm going to get between the small flower and the large flower. And I'll show a few examples during the video. For method, I usually work in number two, but if that fails for you, you can try number one. I honestly haven't noticed much difference between method one and method two. So if one doesn't work, maybe try the other one. Now duplicate end paths, I normally tick that box. The end paths are actually these two shapes here. And this will make a bit more sense when I give you some examples. Interpolate style, I tick that box. By ticking that box, I'll get a graduation between these two colors. If the box is unticked, you will still get the different sized flowers, but they will all be the same color. So at the moment it's four. I might just change that to five. So I've got five steps. So I'll get five new flowers in different sizes. So I'll get five more flowers. Then I'll tick on live preview to check I like it. I'm happy with that, but if I wasn't, I could come back and make some changes. When you've made any changes you plan on making, click on apply and just close the box. Let's move it aside. You can see by duplicating the end paths, the original two are here underneath. I'll show you an example in a minute without them duplicated and you can see what the difference is. Now these are grouped and you can cut them now, but if you want to do further work, you'll need to go Object, Ungroup. And there you go, you've got a set of nested shapes. So let's go through the steps again, but this time I'm not going to duplicate the end paths. So I need to select them both, go Extensions, Generate from Path, Interpolate. So let's leave all the settings the same, but untick the box duplicate end paths. You can look at live preview and then click apply and close. Right, so I've got five steps again, but it didn't duplicate the end paths, but they're still underneath. If you don't duplicate them, they don't become part of your design. Whereas if you tick the box duplicate end paths, you can see the smallest one is included in the graduation. 
So there's nothing wrong with this design. It can be used just the same. It just means it visually on your screen, you want it to look like this or graduated. You need to do a little bit of manual work. Just get rid of these two examples and I'll just show you one more thing that you might find happens to you. So we'll select both again, go extensions, generate from path, interpolate. So I'm ticking end paths, ticking style, leaving method at two, exponent at zero. When I've got live preview, it means I can start changing things and I will see them on the screen. What I find happens for me quite frequently is when I start playing with these settings, I don't get the result I expect. So let's just try it. See, we did it straight off. Some days it doesn't happen, some days it happens every time. Now, you might think nothing's happened. But I'll just tick apply and close. Move it aside, even though it looks like nothing happened, we'll go object on group. And see, it actually did. It's happened in the reverse. So instead of the largest being on the bottom and the smallest on the top, it's the other way around. The largest is on the top. And you either go back and start again, or I usually find it's just quicker to put the big one there, go to the next largest one, raise it to the top, next largest, raise it to the top. And of course, just select them all if you want it visually on the screen to look all graduated. And there you have it. So if you try it and you think, oh, what's gone wrong? It's not working. Just maybe finish the process, ungroup them and have a look. And really, it only takes a few seconds to turn around and put them back in a different order. So if you like creating designs where you're using multiple sizes of the same design, this is a pretty fast and easy way to create your own nested styles. If you'd like more ideas on creating designs for your cutter, feel free to visit my blog at cuttingtime.blogspot.com. Thank you.